Alright, welcome to Math 1350 video lesson, Chapter 3, Section 2. Now in this section, we have to look at a few definitions first. We have to talk about the properties of math. We're going to discuss the rounding rules. The cardinal number of a set. Whether something is open or closed under addition and the set notations the symbols used all right to begin with let's look at the properties of math first one we talk about is the commutative property of colon. To commute means to move. When you commute in your car, you move from one place to another. Now, whenever you see a colon at the end of a sentence, that usually means there's a list. We have a commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication. And here it is. The commutative property of addition says if I have two numbers, x and y, right, they can be anything, they're going to be the same thing as y plus x. So pick any two numbers. 3 plus 4 is the same thing as 4 plus 3. They both equal 7. So commutative property means moving your numbers around. Same thing with multiplication. x times y is the same thing as y times x. 3 times 4 equals 4 times 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12. That's the commutative property. Now, I'll put any further, let me talk about the multiplication. Addition, subtraction, division, they all have to have symbols between them. Multiplication is the only operation that I can have a dot between there. I could have one inside a parenthesis with nothing between there. I can have a little multiplication x. I can sometimes have asterisks. So multiplication is the only one that doesn't have to be there to be there or has many different ways. For this one here is 3 times 2. 3 times 2. 3 times 2. 3 times 2. So, when we start dealing with all these, be very careful. Whenever, if there's nothing between them, then it's multiplication. <clears throat> all right. The second property is called the associative property <coughs> of... When we associate, what we do is we form groups. <coughs> so it's associate property of addition. And associate property of multiplication. Now, 
in mathematics, there's nothing in our known universe that can add or process more than two bits of information at any one time. So if we have three numbers, three numbers, X, Y, and Z, and we add them all together, then I get the same answer. But the problem is this. They both are done the same way. Read left to right, which is where we introduce parentheses. The parentheses tell us which ones we have to do first. So for example, 3 plus 4 plus 5 equals to 3 plus 4 plus 5. Do inside the parentheses first. 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. Or we can do this other side. We can do inside here. So we have 3, 4 plus 5 is 9. 3 plus 9 is 12. Because, yeah, in, a, in an associate properties, we put parentheses. They're, they're left in the same order, but there's parentheses around a certain pair. So in the multiplica multiplication, x times y times z is the same thing as x times y times z. So we have 3 times 4 times 5, or 3 times 4 times 5. Do inside the parentheses, 3 times 4 is 12. Let's do this. 4 times 5 is 20. Now, which side's easier to do? This is the beauty of this property. I could pick whatever two numbers I want to to make my process easier. The right side's much easier. So all I have to do is here is 3 times 2 is 6. Put a zero at the end of it. This side, the left side, 5 times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1. It's so much work to be done. It's the same answer, but there's much, much, much more work. Okay, so for the first two properties, we have to separate the additions and multiplication. The third property is probably one of the most important ones. The distributive property. You notice there's no of behind it. Because this one takes both addition and multiplication into account. This is what it looks like. A times X plus Y. The number in front of any variable or parenthesis or anything is called a coefficient. That's a coefficient. So if you have a coefficient in front of a parenthesis and there's an operation inside there, then what we have to do, since it's multiplied, we have to multiply the coefficient to each term separately. So a times x is ax. Positive times positive is positive. a times y is ay. You know, what, this, what this property does on one side is gets rid of parentheses. Because we can't solve anything as long as we have parentheses, so this helps us get rid of it. But that's going this way. From here to here. That's called the that's distributivity. But we can also go the other way. That's what equals means. You can go either direction. What do both of these have in common? They both have an A. So if we take out the A and put whatever we have left inside parentheses, so they both have an A in common. We take out the A, so we have X plus Y. So this is called factoring. I'm going this way. All right, those are the three most popular the most powerful ones. Then we have identities, inverses, um, 
won't get too much into those, but like for example, the inverse one, inverse property of so addition and multiplication. So we have x plus what gives us zero. No, in, in other words, we had a number nine. Nine plus what gives us zero? Be negative nine. I have the same numbers, opposite signs. Same thing here, negative x. So if we're adding, all we have to do is change the sign and that'll cancel out the numbers. If we're multiplying, what times x gives us 1? We use the inverse property to remove a number or letter from an equation. 5 times what equals 1? Well, it's just the flip of it. This right here is x over 1. Flip it and multiply it. The x's cancel, so we have f plus 1. This is 5 over 1, so it's 1 over 5. The 5's cancel, leaving 1. Now, why is that important? Here's two examples. Whenever we solve for a letter, a variable, we have to get rid of all the numbers. So this number is a positive 5. We want to get rid of it. How do we get rid of it? Subtract 5. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we know positive 5 minus 5 becomes 0, so they just cancel. 3 minus 5. 5 is bigger than 3. It's negative. So we know the answer is negative. 5 minus 3 is 2. And so the answer is x is negative 2. If you have your variable connected to something by multiplication, what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So I divide both sides by 4. The 4's cancel. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So that's what we use the inverse property for to, to solve for variables. All right. Now, rounding rules. The, the rule is this. Whatever digit place you are rounding to look at the next number to the right to its right If that number is between 0 and 4, just drop them. Make them all zeros. If that number is between 5 and 9, add 1 to the 
number you are rounding to. And make all numbers after it zeros. We have two different types. If it's a digit to the left of the decimal point, or if it's a decimal. So let's say I had number four, three, five. To seven. Because this is the ones, this is the tens, this is the hundreds, this is the thousands, and this is the ten thousands. Next would be hundred thousand, millions, ten millions, hundreds. So it always goes in ones tens, hundreds. Always goes in those three. And so we group them with groups of three. Ones, tens, hundreds. Ones, tens, hundreds. One, tens, hundreds. So I'm rounding to the thousands place. So I'm rounding to this one. So I look at the number right before it. Number five, the number five is between five and nine. So I add one to the three. Since that's between that's between five and nine, I add one to this one. So I get forty four thousand. Make the rest zero. If you have decimals In the decimals, in, no, in the digit side, we start with ones and then tenths. In the decimals, we start with the tenths. Then we go to the hundredths. Then we go to the thousandth. And then ten thousandth. So we skip the ones. The decimal takes care of the ones. That's tenths. Hundred or ten hundred thousand ten thousandths around to the hundreds. So I'm running to the hundreds, which is that one. The thousandth is that one. So again, I look at the number right before it. Seven is between five and nine, so I add one to the hundredths number. So we get four, two, decimal. I'm making it that one, so I add one to it. It becomes a six. And make everything else below behind it zeros. There's my rounded number. Whenever you see that symbol, the car I mean it's cardinal number. Basically it says number of elements in, let's cut, let's see we have that, in 
the set A. So whatever's inside there is a set. The cardinal number or the cardinality is how many numbers are in the set. So if set A consisted of A, A E, I, O, U, the cardinality of A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is 5. So far, so good, I hope. Symbols of sets or of number systems. Whenever you see this symbol, that stands for set of all natural numbers. These are our counting numbers. One, two, three, so on and so forth. If we see a big W, that stands for the set of all whole numbers. Whole numbers are all the natural numbers plus the number zero. So whole numbers are zero, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. If you notice we're building so just the counting numbers, then we have zero. Let's go to the other side now. We also have to include those guys. If you see a Z, those stand for the set of all integers. Integers are all numbers from negative infinity. to zero to positive infinity. Then the next step we look at set of all rational numbers. Rational number simply means fractions. It's a ratio. One number above another. Now, it, it's bigger than you think. It's more than just one half or five seventh. It also includes numbers like three or negative five. These are rational because you can make them into fractions. So all the integers are rational numbers because I make them all over one. Now, if a number is not rational, set of all irrational numbers. Basically, the definition, if you see it anywhere, is that our irrational number is a number that is not rational. Okay, so, but here's a more de definitive answer for these. Rational numbers 
have two things. Have finite decimals or they're repeating. What is finite decimals? Like 1 over 4 is 0 0.25. It stops. 3 over 1 is 3.0. It stops. Repeating is if I had 1 over 3. That's 0 0.3333. Three, three. And it goes on. If it, if it says repeating, then we just put a, little, a line over the number, and we know that means repeating. So if you saw 0.34 with a line over it, what that means is 0 0.34, 34, 34, 34, and forever and ever. Irrational is like pi. It doesn't have an end or it doesn't have a sequence. You can't predict what the next one's going to be. All right. Let's look at what they mean when we say open under addition, open or closed. All right, so basically what this means is this. If we have a set, let's say the set S, which consists of the set one, Just one element. Is this set open or closed under addition? With the way you test it, so whatever's inside there, if you only have one, then obviously, yeah, one equals one. If set B is the number zero, yeah, because zero equals zero. But Let's say set M had the set 0 and 1. Is that closed under, under addition? Now, if you have more than one element, that means I can take any number inside here and add it to another one. It could be the other one or it could be itself. But if it's closed, that means the answer, like 0 plus 0, the answer is inside the set. 0 plus 1 is 1. That 1 is inside the set. 1 plus 1 is 2. But that's not in the set. So this one is closed under addition. So whatever you have inside the set, you have to be able to add those numbers together in any order, and the answer has to be in, in that set also. Here's one. Let's say the set S consisted of all X's that were elements of the natural numbers. Remember, those are counting numbers. such that x is greater than or equal to 5. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on and so forth, to infinity. So if I take any two of these numbers, let's say 5 plus 5, that equals 10. Is 10 in the set? Yes. 5 plus 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. 11, 12, 13. Yeah, 13 is in the set. 10 plus 20 equals 30. Yes, it's in there also. So this one is open. So that's what it means to be open and set. Just whatever is inside there, you can combine any two of the numbers, including themselves. 
are they again still in the in the set? Estimation. This is what a lot of people should do when they go shopping. See if they how well they sit with respect to what they're buying. Estimation is rounding down or up to a number that is easy to work with. That's a very that's a very very, very short uh, definition for it. That's pretty much my made up. So basically if I had 403 plus 285. So I don't have to worry about up and out of that. Estimation, what's the closest number to 403? 400. 285, it's 300. So this number, whatever this answer is here, is approximately 700. All right, so let's look at now the homework problems.